Happy Friday, 8th grade. Today we get to talk about trig uh, basic trigonometry stuff. So we're, we're even getting into some basic stuff that you'll learn more of later in high school and trigonometry and such. Uh, but we're going to start really basic, so don't worry, it's not going to get too crazy today. But definitely some new things to learn and to think about. We're going to learn what are called the three trigono trigonometric ratios. That's a tough word to say. And maybe you've noticed on your calculator, you've seen these three words on some of the keys, sine, cosine, and tangent, or sin, cos, tan. Those are abbreviations for what we're going to work on today. So I, I remember as a young kid, always thinking like, why is the word sin on my calculator? I can't make my calculator sin, or I can't make my calculator get a tan. But this is why. Those are short for sine, cosine, and tangent. And what these are, are they're ratios comparing the sides of a right triangle. Okay, and so there, there are little measurements that you can do or ratios that you can find of the difference in the leg lengths uh, across from certain angles on a triangle. And you can use these little ratios to solve for missing sides and missing angles on a triangle. Okay, so that's basically what they're for. They're for helping you to find sides that are missing and they're to help you find angles that are missing on a right triangle. So sine, cosine, and tangent. These might be good ones just to jot down. We're going to need them a lot today and then Monday when we review this as well. You might just want to jot those down quick on the top of your page or on a piece of scrap paper you can use for a couple of days. So you don't have to keep looking back in your book for these. All right, so let's do one example. Uh, do this one with me. It'll help you learn these and pick these up quicker. Okay, it says find the three trigon trigonometric ratios for angle A. So here's angle A. We're going to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A. You can abbreviate sine as sin. That's fine, S-I-N. Okay, so we need the leg that's opposite to angle A, right? Because that's the first part of sine, right? The opposite leg is 9, okay? The hypotenuse is always the long side of a triangle, right? That's 15. And then if you can reduce to it, so notice we can divide these both by 3. So there we go. There's our sine, okay? Now let's do cosine next, the second ratio. Okay, cosine is the leg adjacent and the hypotenuse. Adjacent means next to, right? So we're talking this leg and the hypotenuse for this one, okay? And notice we don't have B, so we're going to have to solve it. You guys know how to do that from last lesson, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we can use the, um, the Pythagorean theorem to help us get that missing side. So we have C squared, right? We have 15 squared, which is 225. So I'll just change that to 225 right away so it doesn't get too messy on our page here. B squared, we're trying to figure out, right? And then A squared is 9, so 81. So if I take away 81 from both sides, just like we did last time, right? 225, take away 81, gives us 144. So B squared equals 144, and then square both sides, right? So we end up with B equals 12. So if they have a missing side like that, you might have to solve for one just to help yourself get all these different ratios. So cosine, again, is the leg adjacent, which we now know is 12 over the hypotenuse, which we know is 15. And again, we can reduce, right? If we divide them both by 3, we get 4 fifths this time. And so there's our cosine and then our tangent. Notice these are just ratios. They're comparing one side to the other. And you can use those ratios to help you eventually find more missing sides and things. We'll work on that some more. But that's really all they are. Sine, cosine, and tangent are comparisons or ratios of two sides of a right triangle. So tangent is leg opposite. Remember, we're doing angle A. So here's the angle opposite of angle A, so 9 over the leg adjacent, 12, right? And so the tangent, if we reduce that down, would be 3 over 4. So there we go. There are three trigonometric ratios for angle A. You know, they could ask you to do that for angle B or angle C as well. In fact, in your book practice problems, they do. But I think once you see that once, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, then they're going to let you use a calculator today to find cosine, tangent, and, and sine. And you'll find a nice calculator to do this uh, if you don't have one at home on our homework help page of our web web page. Use the basic calculator, not the graphing one. We're not going to be graphing lines or anything today, but click on the basic calculator and it'll look like this. Okay, you'll, you'll pull up a calculator like this on a web page for you. Now to find sine, cosine, and tangent, you're going to have to click on this button right here. This one that says function, F-U-N-C. And when you do, it'll look like this. Now you can see there's sine, there's cosine, and there's tangent. So you can use those to type them right in. Okay, so we're going to use that calculator to find the cosine of 42 degrees. In other words, if there's an angle that's 42 degrees, what will be the leg adjacent over the leg that's the hypotenuse? Uh, what will that ratio be? 
Okay, I pulled up that calculator from our web page, our classroom web page, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit function. Okay, now cosine of 42. So I'm going to hit cosine, and then I'm going to have to hit the main button again, this button again, this first one to get back to my regular numbers. Cosine of 42, and there we go. Uh, there's our ratio, 0.743144825. And they'll usually tell you you can round to the hundredths or the thousandths place. So if we rounded to two decimal places, we'd have 0.74 as our ratio for the cosine of 42 degrees. So for those problems, just type in the correct function, either sine, cosine, or tangent, and then just type in the degrees and then round off your answer to whatever they want you to round for. Those are pretty easy. The next they're going to have you solve a triangle. When they say solve a triangle, what they mean is find all the missing sides and all the missing angles of that triangle. So the first thing we'll want to do is get the one missing angle. Notice angle A is what we're going to need to get. We've already got two of the other angles, right? We've got angle B here, and we know that this is 90 degrees. So remember, all triangles are 180 degrees, right? So if we take away 90, we end up with 90. And then if we take away 41, we end up with 49 degrees, right? So let's fill that in on angle A right away. So there's our first missing measurement. So what you'll want to do for your final answer is take all the ones that were missing and list them off. So angle A was 49 degrees. Okay, so that's our first answer. Now we want to find the measurement of one of these missing sides. Why don't we start with C? And to help us get that side, we're going to use angle A, which is right next to side C here. Okay, and we're going to say, we're going to look and we're going to see, okay, We've got the angle right next to it, the adjacent angle, and we've got the hypotenuse. So looking on your, your uh, ratios here, which one has the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Cosine, right? So this is the one we're going to use. So we're going to say the cosine of 49 equals, okay, and then let's fill in our pieces that we have. Uh, our hypotenuse goes on the bottom, that's C, right? And we do know that the adjacent side is 6. So we need to solve this for C. So in order to do that, we're going to have to multiply both sides times C. Let's get this C over to the other side. So this is, this is what we've got now. C times the cosine of 49 equals 6, right? And then let's divide both sides by the cosine of 49 to get that over to the other side. And so now we've got C by itself. So now we can solve. We'll solve for C by doing 6 divided by the cosine of 49. So if I pull up my handy-dandy calculator, you can do the same. We can do 6 divided by function, the cosine, main 49. Put our parentheses, and there we go. We get a side length of 9.1 if we round that off. So we'll fill that in right here. So let's add side AB equals 9.1 to our solutions. All right, let's find the last remaining side, and that's side A over here, okay? So if we want to find side A, uh, let's take a look at what we've got around it. Let's grab a, an angle around it. Let's just grab angle B, because that's touching side A. And notice for angle B, we've got what we would call the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, right? Adjacent side and hypotenuse. So once again, we're going to use cosine. So we're going to say the cosine of 41, right, because that's the angle that we have, equals... Okay, and then cosine is the adjacent leg. Uh, that's a leg that we don't know yet, A, right? And we just figured out this side. Remember, it was 9.1, so we can do that, right? Now we need to solve for A. So we're going to take both sides times 9.1. Okay, that cancels this out. So we get A equals 9.1 times the cosine of 41, right? So let's do that. We'll say 9.1 times the cosine of 41. We hit enter, and we get an answer of about 6.86, or if we round that off to one decimal place, 6.9. So we'll fill in that last side. Side CB equals 6.9. And there we go. We have solved our triangle. Let's do another one. I know that's a lot to think about, so let's do one more just to get this fresh in your mind. And if you do this one right along with me, this one here, I think that's going to really help it stick. So here we go. Notice on this one, we need angle B, right? That's missing. We need side AC, that's missing. And we need side CB, 
That's missing. So we're going to find all three of those things to complete or solve this triangle. Let's start with angle B. Now we know that all triangles are 180, right? So we can take 180 minus 90, which is 90, and then minus 35, because that's the other angle, right? So we borrow here and we get 55 degrees. So there we go. We've got our first missing piece. Angle B is 55 degrees. All right, now let's find one of our missing sides. Let's just start with AC right here, okay? So notice, let's pick an angle that's right next to AC. Let's just go with angle A, okay? And notice, compared to angle A, we've got the hypotenuse and an adjacent side. So hypotenuse and an adjacent side. So once again, we're going to choose cosine here. And so we're going to write the cosine of the angle that we're trying to use to solve this. Cosine of 35 is the adjacent side, which we don't have. So we'll put x. And the hypotenuse, 7. So we want to solve for x, right? So in order to do that, we're going to take both sides times 7. Right? That'll cancel this out from this side. So here's what we've got. 7 times the, times the cosine of 35 is, equals x. So let's do this math using our calculator. Here we go. 7 times the cosine of 35. Pop that in. And we get about 5.7 if we would round to one decimal place. So we'll fill that in on our triangle. We'll also fill that in right here. All right. Let's get the last side that we need. So we need this side right here. So why don't we use angle B to help us solve that, right? Because that's right nearby. So notice, angle B, we've got the hypotenuse and we've got an adjacent side again. So once again, cosine will be a good choice for us, okay? So we're going to put in the cosine of the angle that we're using, cosine of 55 equals the leg adjacent. We don't know, right? The hypotenuse is 7. So we're going to solve for x, okay? So we're going to take both sides by 7 to Get that x by itself. So here's what we end up with, right? We have 7 times the cosine of 55, okay, equals x. So in order to solve this, we'll do the 7 times the cosine of 55. So here we go. 7 times the cosine of 55 equals about 4.0 if we round to one decimal place. So we'll fill that in both on our triangle and right here. And there we go. We have solved this triangle using our ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. Sometimes, though, you'll just need to find missing angles. That's all they want you to do. So when you have to find missing angles, uh, notice this one, we only know this one being 90. So y and x, we have no idea what they are. So if I wanted to find y, I'm going to take a look at what sides I have uh, next to y. I have a hypotenuse and I have an adjacent side. So once again, cosine, right, is what we're gonna use. So to find just an angle using two sides, you're gonna use a special function key on your, your calculator called cosine of negative one, okay? And then we're gonna put in our, our, our uh, division that's going on here. We have the adjacent leg eight over the hypotenuse 19. So that's what you'll wanna type in when you're looking for an angle using just two sides. So let's do that. So I'm gonna hit the function calc, uh, part of our calculator. I'm going to hit cosine negative 1, and then I'm going to type in our numbers 8 divided by 19. And there we go. We get an angle measurement of about 65 degrees if we round that off. So that equals about 65 degrees. So angle Y is 65 degrees. Let's just do angle X. I know we could subtract and get the three angles now, but just as one more example, let's find angle X using one of these ratios, okay? So if I wanted to find angle x, notice I have two sides that exist. Okay, I've got a hypotenuse right here, right? And I've got an opposite side. So opposite and hypotenuse. So this time I'm going to use sine, sine of negative 1, right? Because we're using the sides to find an angle this time. And then we're going to say leg opposite is 8, hypotenuse is 19. So we'll pop that in. All right, let's hit function. Let's just clear this all out. Hit the function, opposite sign, and then 8 divided by 19. And there we are. We get a measurement of about 24 or 25 degrees if we round. So notice the measure of angle x would be 25 degrees. All right, let's do a problem right out of our work. Notice on problem number one, they want us to find the three trigonomic ratios, okay? So let's do that. Let's find sine, cosine, and 
tangent. Okay, I've got this little help up here to help us remember those. So let's do, uh, notice they want us to do, if I look at number one, they want us to do angle A is what they want us to focus on. So always pay attention to that too. I should have put that up on the top of the screen. So angle A, sine is the leg opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite leg is 24 and the, hy and the uh, hypotenuse is 25. Can't reduce that at all, so we just leave it as that, right? So the sine of A, the cosine of A, don't forget to put your A there like I did. The cosine of A should be the leg adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent leg is 7, right? Over the hypotenuse is 25. Once again, we can't reduce. And the tangent of A, tangent should be the opposite, so 24 over the adjacent, 24 over 7. Once again, we can't reduce, and so there we go. We've got the three trigonometric ratios for angle A. Here's problem number nine. Go ahead and just put this second. That's fine. I wanted to do one of these solve the triangle problems with you too because these can be kind of tricky and there's a lot of new steps and things to think about. Okay. So notice what we need to find. Let's make a list first. Notice we need angle X. That'll be the easy thing to find with some subtraction. Right? We need side YZ, so segment YZ, and we need segment YX. Those are the three things we're going to need to get to solve this triangle. So let's solve this angle first. That's the easiest thing, right? We know all triangles are 180. 180 minus 90 is 90. And so we just have to do 90 minus 39. Let's see what's left over for that third angle, right? And so we get 51 degrees. So let's fill that in here. And we'll also fill that in right here. All right, why don't we try to get side YZ first, okay? And so let's pick an angle that's right next to YZ. Why don't we focus on angle Z here, okay? And so notice this angle, we have the uh, hypotenuse side, don't we? And this is the adjacent side, so hypotenuse and adjacent. Notice if I look over here to our helps, cosine is hypotenuse and adjacent. And adjacent. So we'll use cosine. So we'll say the cosine of 39, right, because that's the angle we're working with, equals the adjacent leg. So that's the one we don't know, right? So we'll put an X for that one. Uh, and we do know the hypotenuse leg of 7. So we need to solve this for X, right? So we're going to multiply both sides times 7, so that we get x all by itself. So we have 7 times the cosine of 39. So let's do that on our calculator. All right, here we go. 7 times the cosine of 39, which gives us 5.4. We'll round to one decimal place, 5.4. So we'll fill in 5.4 right here, and we'll fill in 5.4 right here. Okay. All right, let's get this last side, side yx, right? So uh, what angle do we want to use to solve this one? Uh, we could use really any of them. How about angle, the 51 degree angle that we solved before? So we'll, we'll go at it from angle x here. And notice we've got a hypotenuse, and we've got uh, this missing side that we're going to find, OK? So hypotenuse and adjacent side. Uh, once again, we could use cosine to solve this. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to say the cosine of 51, right, equals, okay, and then cosine is leg adjacent, that's x again, right, over the hypotenuse, 7. So again, we need to solve for x to get our answer, so we're going to multiply both sides times 7. We've got our x by itself, so all we need to do is 7 times the cosine of 51, and we're going to get our answer, so let's do that. So 7, once our calculator pops up here, Let's see if we can get it to come back, there it goes, 7 times the cosine of 51. Hit enter on that, we get 4.4. So we'll put 4.4 right here. We'll fill in that last missing piece of solving that triangle. There we go, we've solved the whole thing. So I know this is a lot of new things, um, so certainly don't be afraid to go back into the video at any point and rewatch certain parts. Uh, if you get really stuck, I'd be happy to talk you through any of these problems as well. Uh, hopefully, uh, you've written down sine, cosine, and tangent, because you're going to need those a lot. That way, you don't have to always go back to the video. If not, now would be a great time to jot it down quick, hit pause, and, and write them down. We're going to use those a lot today and next week, Monday, too, when we review this. Don't feel bad if this doesn't sink in right away. Uh, when you learn something new, especially something like this with a lot of new pieces and steps, it can take a while to sink in, okay? So have a growth mindset about it. Hopefully it goes well, but let me know if it doesn't, and I can talk you through any problems, okay? I won't be bothered if you contact me. Make sure you do that. Have a good day, guys.